Welcome to my channel Tools for Ascension by Wolfgang and I'm Wolfgang and my gift to you today is this guided meditation where we will be dealing with the power of the word, understanding the concepts and then in our guided meditation we will be clearing the karma, the vows, the curses around our and our ancestors misuse of the words from this and past lifetimes. And of course, you know where it was also done to us and our ancestors. And the guided meditation, you know, starts at this time here, in case you want to sidestep my mental dribble. So, from time immemorial, you know, the spoken word has held a place, you know, of reverence and power in human society. It's influenced, you know, it transcends a mere communication, you know, it touches the realm of the metaphysical, you know, and, um, you know, it has been, you know, shaped beliefs, of course, cultures and individual destinies. So, from an anthropological and maybe philosophical perspective, you know, a word is a sound frequency that stands in, you know, for an idea, you know, something you cannot touch, <laughs> you know, or an object, you know. And um, a word, you know, has a world field, you know, around it, you know, with many different connotations and meanings, you know, as per the culture, you know, where it's being used, like yellow snow. You know, yellow is the color, you know, you can't really touch it, but, um, and snow is definitely an object, you know, and together, you know, there is a connotation, you know, that um, V is involved, you know, and do not eat. And without, you know, knowing the symbolic meaning of words, you know, it's all gibberish, you know, that, you do that, you that, you know. Um, so, and, and it's, you know, quite obvious also, you know, that dogs even understand our words, you know, our horses too, you know, in their emotional context, of course, um, you know, and um, as well, I mean, the meaning, you know, that it stands for. Um, but I have to say, you know, dog actually, you know, communicate telepathically, you know, I mean, they can, you know, engage their crown trucker, and communicate, you know, in pictures, you know, actually very high resolution pictures, you know, to my own, you know, amazement. Now, of course, with the, you know, awakening, you know, of humanity, you know, to telepathy, you know, we may wonder <laughs> whether language, you know, was a step down for humanity, you know, because through telepathy, you know, you can communicate with a huge variety of life forms, with a huge variety of life forms. You know, um, you know the clouds, the trees, animals, um, you know, divine beings, you know, they're all telepathic. You know, Mother Earth, they're all telepathic. You know, the universe doesn't have an eardrum. You know, it's all telepathic. So, words, you know, or language, you know, spoken language, may have become a prison, you know, for humanity, you know, the cutting or communication of, you know, with others. So, locking us, you know, much deeper into the physical world and disconnecting us, you know, from our brothers and sisters here on this path, you know. And, um, I mean, was maybe language by itself, you know, the Babylonian confusion, let's say, let's take telepathy away from them, you know, and um, just, you know, have them do language, you know, which will drift, you know, and just create different mindsets, etc. So, you know, this might have been, you know, a step down for humanity, you know, into deeper separation from other life forms. And 
Well, also maybe language is good, you know, for developing technology, you know, like mining gold. Uh, but that's of course is very wild, you know, speculation. Um, so, from a historical perspective, you know, the spoken word has been instrumental, you know, in shaping societies and cultures, you know. Uh, so, like, you know, great orators, you know, like Cicero, you know, in more recent Lamarth and Luther King, you know, have demonstrated, you know, the ability to move you know, persuade and inspire through speech, you know, so, so to say, you know, negotiation and insights, you know, over the sword, you know, way more effective and efficient. Mm -hmm. And now with Socrates, you know, this method of questioning and philosophers are basically, you know, expert at thinking, you know, that's the original <laughs> cause, I think. You know, so um, Socrates, you know, with his method of questioning, of course, has also influenced, you know, the realm of philosophy, you know, profusely, you know, shaping the whole Western world, you know, was shaped by the Greek, you know, the Romans, you know, they just adapted the mental, you know, scape, you know, of the Greek. It's just like America, you know, it's adapting, you know, the European mindset, you know, as such. Um, you know, becoming a melting pot for everybody. It's just like Rome was, you know, bringing in all the slaves from everybody, you know, and then you had a melting pot. So, uh, sorry for digressing. So, uh, uh, you know, the uh, Martin Luther King speech, you know, I have a dream, you know, um, definitely was a defining moment in the civil rights movement, you know. Again, showcasing, you know, the power of the words, you know, to change. And, and, you know, same in, you know, times of war and peace, you know, the spoken word has been a tool, you know, for leaders, you know, to inspire courage, you know, install fear, you know, or invoke peace. So, Winston Churchill, you know, speeches in World War II, you know, are a prime example of how powerful you know, rhetoric, you know, can bolster national morale and become a catalyst, you know, for unity and resilience. Well, on the other hand, you know, Hitler's speeches were also a keystone, you know, to his popularity. You know, people that know, my, my stepfather knew he was a medic, you know, that he was on metamphetamines, you know, doing his speeches. And so he was high on math, right? And Hitler supposedly admitted, you know, that sometimes, you know, or something supernatural, you know, would come over him, you know, doing his speeches. So, of course, you know, the attention of thousands of people, you know, gives you great energy. And you got to look at those pictures, you know, and those flags. And I mean, this was impressive. You know? So, the attention, you know, uh, gives you, you know, a lot of power and energy, you know, if it's positive. And, you know, what the problem is, you know, so with meth, you know, same with coke, you know, um, where they are, you know, the alpha draconians are there too. And so, you know, most likely um, they're overlaid Hitler, you know, with their consciousness, you know, and used, you know, this power, you know, in a, in a bad way. Um, you know, it seems to be quite clear to me, you know, whatever I read about. And um, the, definitely the Alpha Darkonians, you know, they're heavily involved with the Nazis. I also know this from personal, not book reading, you know, regression work. So, you know, any decent preacher, you know, has probably also experienced, you know, that when they speak, you know, to a receptive audience, they become empowered become more than themselves, become overshadowed by something higher, you know, better than, you know, where you're like, oh my God, you know, this is awesome what I'm speaking, it's just speaking through you and it's going in like a hot knife into a butter. You know? And, well, the same thing happened with Hitler, you know, but with the demoniac <laughs> And, um, 
So, from a metaphysical perspective, you know, words are not just, you know, symbols of meaning, but are also, you know, considered potent carriers, you know, of energy and initiation and intention, you know. And, I mean, this concept just echoes, you know, through all the various spiritual traditions. You know, for instance, you know, in Hinduism, you know, the sacred syllable Om, you know, is believed to be the sound embodiment of the universe, you know, holding immense creative and harmonizing power. Well, you know, I mean, the Om, you know, is a sinus wave. Mm -hmm. And you can actually lay, you know, this ohm, you know, it, it, it resonates, it resonates, you know, and it uh, kind of, you know, um, kind of harmonizes things in your body. So I'm just going to give you a demonstration. I'm going to, let's say, harmonize my ohm now to the throat, so you might feel a tingling or an expansion in your throat. Just give me a second here. Ooh. shift the vibration to the top of the head, the same ohm. So just like, you know, Tesla's resonance, <laughs> you know, um, that can take down a bridge, you know, if you just tune it to the proper frequency. You know? Um, you know, the ohm, you know, definitely has like a harmonizing effect, you know, wherever, you know, you lay that frequency to resonate, you know, around. So, and of course, you know, also in the, you know, Judeo-Christian traditions, you know, um, you know, the genesis of creation itself, you know, um, comes from, from the speaking of the divine, you know, in the beginning, you know, there was the word, you know, that's the myth creation, you know. Well, you know, same myth creation is like, you know, the Big Bang, you know, nobody has seen it yet, you know. Uh, <laughs> um, so, you know, we can, you know, believe those, you know, science priests, you know, or the religion priests. Of course, it's an oversimplification, both concepts. Mm -hmm. So, um, but, um, you know, when you have, you know, a, a word, this is a vibration, you know, and let's say if you have a nothingness, a line, you know, and then, you know, you create, you know, an, an, an up and down, you know, which is actually a sinus wave. So when it's, you know, um, you create, you know, something, an up and a down out of nothing. And when you goes back to normal, you know, it's back to nothing again, but you create something out of nothing. So, you know, um, also another principle, you know, from a metaphysical point of view, is um, that the spoken word, you know, resonates, you know, beyond the immediate, you know, auditory impact, you know, influencing the fabric of reality itself, you know. They carry, you know, vibrations, you know, that can heal, harm, you know, manifest intentions and transform energies. And let me give you an example here. So, <clears throat> you know, so I have like tuning forks here, you know, tuned to Sofagia Road, and let me just ping them slightly. Mm -hmm. So these things, of course, you know, vibrate auditory, you know, and then on every octave, you know, there is a resonance. You know, so one here, one here, so going up and up and up. You know, it's of course with diminishing power or potency, you know, but it states, you know, into more and more subtle realms, you know, and it also, you know, goes to the um, astral realm. And generally after about five seconds, after binging one of those, you know, you can feel, 
you know, the release on the Astroion is that affecting the Astroion. You know, that's just not the word. This is just the sound you know, um, resonating on, you know, higher dimensions, you know, or, you know, upwards into our dimensions. And, of course, <laughs> you know, sound and divine geometry, you know, are closely connected. You know? And sound, of course, as any decent musician knows, you know, creates resonances, you know, that are mathematical, you know, and all music is mathematical, you know. Um, Johann Sebastian Bach, you know, he was really good at this, you know, he um, worked through intu intuition and mathematics. Mm -hmm. So, um, and we can see it, you know, in the new science, you know, cymatics, you know, cymatics, um, you know, they give a good demonstration, you know, about these uh, principles, you know, how it affects, you know, the physical world, you know, and actually in divine geometry, if you hit, you know, the right frequencies. Mm -hmm. And, you know, well, actually, I once built myself a sound bed, you know, blasting my spine, you know, with frequencies, you know, I had like four or five inch speakers, you know, aligned with my spine, you know, one in the root chakra, one at the brain, you know, and then two in between, you know, and uh, well, it's pretty cool, you know, but I like other methods, <laughs> more potent. Um, but it's quite an experience, you know, again, you know, how you use sound to affect, you know, your subtle bodies. And of course, it relaxes also your physical body, like anything, when those things pulsing through you. And, well, it's get even more woohoo now. Mm -hmm. And this is, you know, the Hindu epics. You know, I like the Mahabha, you know, give a very expanded view of the use of the word. So I'm giving here my personal opinion, and please do not be offended. You know, I'm not trying to be iconoclast, I'm trying to get through to the real truth, you know, and, you know, work for the highest good. You know, this be clear, you know, I definitely ask Source and all the divine beings, you know, to make sure that this video, you know, only be listened to and inspected by, you know, beings, you know, whose high self wants them to see this information, you know, for their upliftment, you know, we ask that nobody can block them from getting this information, you know, and that those that do this on purpose, you know, be brought to the courts of divine justice, you know, for limiting, you know, the free will of somebody. Amen. And um, so here you are, so it's probably good for you. <laughs> so, um, you know, that being said, um, just consider, you know, so in the Mahabharat, you know, the big thing is there, you know, follow, you know, the rules and regulation, you know, a divine, you know, codex, you know, of honor, you know, and some, you know, very severe things happen because, you know, people follow that. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, very, very big thing, you know, kind of very similar honor code, like Japanese Bushido code. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I have to say, you know, this is definitely, you know, a very Anunnaki you know, um, type of conduct and also maybe a very reptilian type of contact, you know, like the Alpha Dacunians. So, um, you know, um, we definitely all know that, you know, the beings here incarnating this different skin colors, you know, they were not from here, <laughs> you know, you're not from around here, right? So, um, you know, they were ETs, you know, anybody with green skin and blue skin, you know, is not from around here, you know, so the gods, you know, were walking the earth, you know, either as hybrids, you know, like the Pandavas were, you know, or just straight, <laughs> like Krishna, you know, and the beings that battled there, well, you know, there were also, you know, I did a lot of past life regressions to the Battle of Kurukshetra. You know, with people, you know, with Western education, they have no idea what that was. And they're describing, you know, this very accurately. You know, this was uh, like a battle with all kinds of beings, you know. I mean, nature beings, like tree beings, rock beings, um, Alpha Daconian called Rakshashas, you know, all kinds of ETs, and they used all kinds of weapons. So anyhow, you know, so the word, you know, was very, very important, you know, in this society. 
Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, and also, uh, you know, when, mm, yeah, I'm not going to get into the Anu and Manu thing there. And, um, you know, the other thing was like the use of mantras, mantras, you know, um, sound vibration repeated again and again. You could call it a sing-sang, an incantation, you know, of sound formula. Um, but it's uh, kind of, you know, the way it affects you, just like I demonstrated, you know, with the own, you know, you create, you know, a, a structure, you know, with your sound um, and your visualization, I would say, you know, on the astral and higher dimensions. And um, so, um, you know, there could, you know, of course, they also use technologies to interface, you know, with their psyche, but they could, they had weapons which which they could affect the weather. In. And actually, they could. Um, this is a method, you know, shown again and again. They could empower, you know, arrows, you know, that would be shot. They could empower them, you know, with different mantras, you know, to do all kinds of different types of, you know, destruction. You know? Well, you could say they used missiles, you know, with different warheads. It's definitely the concept is the same, but you know, they definitely, I think, you know, used. Um, arrows you know, um, that you can you know empower you know with these uh, programs and um, you know this um, you know was actually demonstrated in principles um, you know during the you know end of the battle of Kurukshetra you know one of those villains you know got person pursued by the hero um, I think it was one of Arjuna's sons and you know the uh, the um, guy that was running away, you know, didn't have any, you know, hardware on himself anymore. So he picked a blade of grass, you know, and enchanted it, you know, put the mantra on it and threw it, you know, and that was enough. It had to be counteracted, you know, with another Brahmaster. And the Brahmaster is, you know, super destructive. You know, it's like an atomic bomb. You know, there may be, um, you know, there, of course, it is a whole different can of worms <laughs> and there is definitely also archaeological you know um, you know proof that there were actually you know um, atomic explosion you know in, in these areas and um, interesting enough you know after the explosion you know the whole sky you know was covered you know with vimanas these are those pyramid kind of you know travel thingies and then also, you know, push Panjalis. You know, in, in my translation, I read they were calling those flower airplanes. Well, I mean, they didn't travel on lotuses and roses. You know, I'm pretty sure they talked about orbs. You know, like you know, this plasma, plasmoid. You know, orbs. You know, where consciousness, you know, higher dimensional consciousness travel. You know, they don't need. Uh, you know, a hardware in a UFO to go from here to there. You know, they just project themselves and, you know, they appear as orbs or very flower-like, right? That's just only my interpretation. You know, I didn't read this anywhere, this interpretation, but this is what's coming to me. You know, take it or leave. <laughs> so, you know, and of course, you know, there was a huge disturbance that went through all the dimensions, you know, same as the atomic bomb. You know? and um, so, and then, you know, also there was a chastisement, you know, from, um, they call it, you know, their gurus and rishis, you know, appeared and, you know, scolded them, you know, one guy used one of those weapons on those foot soldiers and they get heavily chastised. So this was probably ET or higher dimensional beings, you know, that gave the technology to them, you know, and then, then they start blowing up, you know, the Lulus, you know, the humans. Uh, you know, and they say, no, sorry, we won't, don't want that karma. You know, it's like, you know, you're given, you know, your son a 38, you know, and then he goes and, you know, um, gets even with, you know, his old rival or something like this, you know, um, and then you're responsible, you know, so same thing, you know, even with those mantras, you know, so their spiritual masters were like, hey, your disciple is, you know, going nuts here, you know. <laughs> So, uh, and um, 
So when we like, you know, put this a little bit together, you know, mesh this up, um, you, know, um, you know, there is a lot of power you know, in the spoken word, you know, and that can bridge, you know, the metaphysical, you know, and the tangible reality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, just, uh, you know, as we've seen in the science of semantics, you know, and also I have to say, um, stone levitation. You know, um, when you research this, you know, um, it looks like even the Tibetans, you know, they're levitated stones you know, in front of a, a, what's this, a British camera crew, you know, that recorded this on, on, you know, 60 millimeter or something like that. You know, they used this big, you know, horns and created resonances. I mean, and they do it with little balls, you know, <laughs> in a lab to the sound vibration. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, of course, also the word, the spoken word, you know, confers, you know, emotions. You know, I mean, all the love songs, you know, beside the meaning, I mean, it's the emotion, you know, of the performer, you know, that, you know, um, paces your own emotions. Mm -hmm. It's just like body language, you know, or colors, you know, they all have an effect on your emotions. And then, of course, there is the intention, you know, and, um, you know, the belief, you know, also that it can create, you know, like fear, you know. And, you know, this can manifest, you not know, changes in your internal world, you know, in your understanding, in your worldview, as well as in your emotional body. <laughs> you know? and, um, and so, you know, it has, you know, affected whole societies. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you know, and there's a duality, you know, between the magical aspect and then, of course, the, um, you know, concept aspect. And, um, well, in both paradigms, you know, the spoken word, you know, acts as a vessel, you know, for conveying, you know, deeper truth, you know, emotions and intention. You know, whether it's now political you know, the leader, you know, enticing to action, you know, or spiritual guru, um, you know, meditate more and more impact in wisdom, mm -hmm. or, you know, an individual, you know, are practicing affirmations, you know, the underlying principle, you know, is the same, you know, words have the power, you know, to create and alter realities. Mm -hmm. And so that's um, pretty much, you know, the mainstream perspective. You know? Now, of course, the more juicy stories, you know, from the Wu side, you know, from, from the, around the ashram campfires, you know, are coming now. First of all, and this is very common sense, you know, there are eight muscles, and I think there are more, you know, sub-muscles, you know, that make you, you know, all kinds of intricate movements. Mm -hmm. And so, and to move those around, you know, for speech, you know, as well as, you know, all the other, you know, jaw muscles and, you know, your larynx, mm -hmm. you know, um, this takes a lot of electric, means nervous energy. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to, you know, it takes, you know, the same amount of electricity, you know, for your body, you know, to activate, you know, this huge glute that you have, you know, or to activate, you know, this tiny... <laughs> little muscle, you know, in your tongue. So, um, just, you know, when you run your mouth a lot, you know, you are um, expending a lot of electric energy. You know, you're not necessarily jogging, you know, and having physical energy together with the electric firing of the main, you know. Um, from calorie point of view, not much going on there, but, you know, your brain, you know, and those things, you know, they work in high power. So, you know, that's where, you know, the woe of silence, you know, comes in. You know, it's, um, you know, from a Hindu perspective, you know, the power of tapasya, you know, which means, you know, renunciation. You know, you give up something, you know, like you simplify your life. You know, you give up saying, oh, you know, I'm not going to eat any meat, you know, to help maybe, you know, the war effort or to, you know, for my, my own health or for my friend's health, you know. So, you know, renunciation, you know, doing something difficult, you know, fasting, you know, from water, 
you know, fasting from sleep, you know, fasting from TV or radio. Now, woe of silence is you are fasting from speaking, you know, and so you, you're saving, you know, a lot of this electricity. You know? And of course, you know, instead of you know, speaking, you know, and some people, you know, speak a lot during a day, you know, um, and, um, <laughs> you know, you can save, you know, um, instead of two or three hours speaking, um, if you don't do this, you know, you save a lot of this electric energy, you know, plus you're not distracted. You know, and waste your energy, your life force, and your attention, you know, on useless talk. You know, in Sanskrit, that's called prajalpa. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and of course, you know, the, the monks, you know, had very similar things. I'll get a little later, you know, to this mean Western monks, let me put it like this. You know, and of course the same thing, you know, with um, um, Tibetan Buddhists, you know, and they're in their caves. <laughs> they're not going to talk to any human, right? Anyhow, so, you know, when I was in the Himalayas, you know, I met a yogi there in the caves, you know, I was staying there in the caves, in the ashrams. Um, he had, you know, done this um, vow of maunam, you know, and of silence, and he also was doing karma yoga. You know, means he was doing service, he was cooking and cleaning for everybody and, you know, wasn't get paid. You know, there was no reward for him as such. I mean, he could, he slept there and ate there and lived there. And, you know, so he didn't speak and he served. So, you know, in another perspective, you know, he worked on telepathy. You know, this mind projection somehow he had to go around and humility. You, know, you have to be very humble if you can't argue with anybody, you know, and if you serve everybody, you know, that um, is, you know, creates humility. And, you know, now about the Christian side, you know, so I once, you know, hung around, you know, for you know, in the afternoon with an ex-Trappist monk, you know, and so to be, you know, accepted into this order, you know, you have to stay for two years, you know, in a hut, I mean, super isolated from humans, you know, they push some food, you know, through the, under the door, you know, you have this little hut in the forest, with a stream going through it, you know, for all your cleansing business, you know, and take, pushing food, and that's it, you know. And he said, of course, you know, you learn how to talk telepathically, you know, to all the other nature beings, you know. And he said, you know, he was uh, never alone, you know, he had a great time. You know, and so, I mean, you know, I like this. You know, so you have some real going mystics, you know, and not some scholars. <laughs> there, you know. And, um, yeah, I also once did a past life regression, you know, with, um, you know, somebody um, that, you know, we went to a life as a hermit. You know? And as a hermit, you know, also this person um, communicated, you know, telepathically, you know, with the trees. Um, see if the forest was safe, if there were any dangerous animals. He also asked rocks, you know, by the cave, if there were any bears or dangerous animals in there before we would go in. You know, he was very humble and depending, you know, but, you know, um, communicating telepathically. You know? uh, yeah, so, you know, um, if words can manifest, you know, then we better be really careful with your use, you know, and with our focused intent, you know, instead of spraying our energy all over, you know, and getting nothing done. So, you know, that's why gossip and backstabbing, you know, have a huge negative energetic effect. You know? And um, they get to the back of your bank and then, you know, as a routine procedure, you know, I clear all the backstabbing stuff from clients, you know, and uh, it really, you know, makes you tingle. And um, so, you know, also a few kind words of guidance and support, you know, you can do a lot, you know, um, you can save a life, like, you know, with a smile or some nice words, it doesn't take much, it doesn't cost anything, you know, but you can change a life. So you have something very, very precious there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, when you, you know, use your word, you know, for the highest good, you know, I always, you know, um, feel empowered, you know, by higher consciousness, when I could, let's call it, 
preach, you know, use my words, you know, to give insights, you know, and change consciousness at a time when a person is receptive, you know, or when you use your word, voice and word, you know, and um, meaning, you know, for a blessing, you know. And um, so in my personal perspective, you know, um, you know, um, you can shift things, you know, for the better with your word, you know. So the science of uh, semantics, you know, has shown us that, you know, sound, um, you know, or words or mantra, you know, can affect physical shape of things. Mm -hmm. And um, also, you know, um, sound, you know, um, affects chi, you know, and um, directly, you know, without a symbolic meaning as such, you know, and that's kind of how light language, you know, a lot of you, you know, use light language or light language comes to you nowadays. You know, um, well, Natty is an example for this, you know, and this stuff is definitely very powerful, you know, it again works like Sanskrit, you know, or any of those so-called divine languages. You know? Yeah, a lot of it sounds in a very Native American to me. <laughs> you know? and sometimes I pick up some Sanskrit. You know? um, but in general, you know, it's um, basically just, you know, I mean, there is, uh, you know, it's just this, the sound, you know, has an effect on your chi. And, you know, once, you know, I did the now singer Kavacha. You know, Kavacha means weapon and the singer is this uh, powerful larin, you know, that um, bails you out, you know, wipes the floor with rakshashas. <laughs> Anyhow, um, you Hindus know what that is. Um, so I did that, you know, this is one of those razor blades I carry in my boots, if you know what I mean. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, it packs quite a punch, you know. And so I noticed, you know, there are these syllables, you know, chatta, chatta, chindi, chindi, you know, like ch, ch, ha, ta, 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 you know, and this is like toning, you know, this, and I can feel, you know, the effect, you know, it has on my subtle body, you know, these are definitely cutting sounds, and, you know, I've heard those also, I pick them out, you know, in light language, <laughs> you know, these are just like um, many of those sounds, you know, they disrupt, you know, certain patterns, you know, in your light body, you know, and in that way, you know, they are working. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as above, so below, so, you know, sound um, affects the physical world to a certain degree, and in the astral world also probably quite stronger. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, you know, again, the uh, symbolic meaning and then the, you know, the effect it has on reality. You know? So there is Sanskrit, you know, Hebrew and, you know, Chinese, you know, claim that their language, you know, actually represents the real thing. And, uh, you know, in the way, you know, if you pronounce, you know, the word, you know, properly, it should self-manifest, you know, of course, those times, you know, are long gone, you know, that's fifth dimensional consciousness, you know, but that is the concept, you know, you visualize and pronounce that frequency and boom, that's what's there, you know, and that makes demigods, you know, or advanced, you know, ETs, you know, sometimes maybe with the help of technology to enhance their abilities, but that makes them gods. They can manifest stuff. Mm -hmm. That's what their consciousness can do. You know, it's not a question of, you know, uh, yeah, they're just making this up. No. And um, so, you know, mantra, you know, of course, has intent. You know, anybody that knows the rosary, you know, it's intent. Mm-hmm. And, uh, or, you know, um, that can a mantra can also be a vibration, you know, like Rama, 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 you know, Rama. So this again has two components, you know, one is that Rama, that sound, you know, vibrates with your heart chakra, you know, vibrates, you know, in this area, and you probably feel this. Uh, 
here, vibrates right here. And then, of course, Ma. Ma. You know, again, the whole thing fluffs up, you know, and like Ma, Ma. You know, yeah, that's for mummy, you know, this is for the mother, you know, all the cultures pretty much have this. And this opens the heart chakra. <laughs> you know, so um, just, you know, vibrating this, and it's a name actually, you know, creates this resonance in your chakras, you know, and kind of stimulates the loving aspects in you. Right? On another hand, you know, Rama, you know, was a green ET, you know, who had this huge battle, you know, um, with the Rakshashas, you know, in Sri Lanka, you know, because he kidnapped you know, his wife in his concert, you know, kidnapping an ET, you know, and Rakshasas, Alpha Dakunian, do this a lot, you know, and I'm not talking from book learning, no, 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 you know, I have to, you know, constantly, you know, have uh, mermaids, and, you know, Atlantean priestesses and pharaohs and kings, you know, and other beings that got kidnapped, also ETs that are here, you know, to help the so-called gods, get kidnapped, you know, and captured, you know, by the Alpha Dakunian. So, you know, this is not such a... I know it's hard to believe, you know, it's hard to believe, but, you know, uh, you have your own bullshit meter, your own truth meter, you know, see what resonates with you. Mm -hmm. So, uh, anyhow, you know, so this was a very divine high being, you know, this Rama. You know, and it's probably, you know, expanded even more in its awareness, you know, has been worshipped you know, for a few thousand years by now. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, by pronouncing this name, you know, you also connect with that consciousness of that person. You know, it creates a telepathic link. It's like dialing somebody's telephone number. You know? So when, you know, I chant the name Krishna in my heart, you know, and there's a connection, you know, with this blue, you know, being. You know, and which is, of course, you know, non-corporal <laughs> anymore. <laughs> you know? An all-pervading consciousness, you know. So, um, you know, and, um, you know, anybody else you call in, you know, whether it's Mother Mary or Kwan Ying, you know, um, you know, it's kind of a telephone number. So it's not just, you know, some acoustic symbol. No, it actually functions like a telephone number. You can get, you know, in touch with this. Mm -hmm. And um, now, you know, yeah, you may say, well, Wolfgang, you know, you're completely full of it. You know, hey, I have my reasons for these, you know, exemptions, you know, assumptions. So the Srimad Bhagavatam, you know, this is one of the major, you know, Hindu teachings. Um, you know, um, there are huge, I mean, pages and pages of genealogies. You know, this means, you know, Prince blah, 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 you know, married, you know, Princess blub, 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 you know, and they had a kid, you know, bang, 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 you know, and then this one hooked up with this one, and they had other kids, you know, and then, and on and on and on. You know, super boring. You know, super boring. Pages and pages for this. You know, why is this in a scripture? Mm -hmm. That's supposed to teach you and help you with enlightenment. You know, that's what it was designed for. Well, if you're psychic, <laughs> you know, and I have clients, you know, you give them a name, they see, you know, they see the race, you know, or they see, you know, the, um, the person, you know. So, you know, if you're a mystic enough, you know, um, you know, you pronounce the name or you ask, you know, to be shown, you know, um, you might get a connection with this one. You know, of course, you have to, you know, qualify. You know, have proper etiquette, proper love, you know, definitely with a loving, open heart. Uh, I'm just curious, you know, why don't you just come and show yourself to me? They're like, what? <laughs> you know, no out. You know? It's just like when you, you have to ask real nicely. But, you know, there are a telephone number. You know? So this is why, you know, when you have mantras, you know, with divine beings, you know, or ET, you know, you connect, you know, to their vibration and to their energy, and, you know, it's purifying. It's purifying, you know, um, due to this association. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, so... Um, you know, the other question is, of course, you know, we kind of learned, you know, that the world can have a lot of power. You know? 
in you know just like with a gun so you know what happens if you abuse you know the power of the world you know i mean there's nobody you know checking for bullet holes and whatever well i tell you what can happen so you know, i uh, you know run you know manage and you know the only metaphysical thing supply store, so, you know, metaphysical supplies, books, you know, crystals, you know, the whole nine yards, singing bowls, you know, silver jewelry, and so on, you know, for one year, you know, as a manager. You know, and of course, you know, um, all kinds of people, you know, come in there, you know, as um, customers, and I could always, you know, pick out, you know, the dark magicians, you know, when they're dropped in. You know? And, of course, later on, I always knew, you know, by the kind of paraphernalia they bought. <laughs> you know? and, but, you know, I knew right away, you know, and they all had a very heavy, compromised, hurting solar plexus chakra. You know, this is your power chakra in society, you know, and if you abuse your word, you know, this means if you abuse your power, you know, that calm, <laughs> you know just go right there, you know, so these were some very unhappy fellows, you know, I mean, none of them were happy, I never, you know, saw them smiling, you know, that's just from my little perspective, now, um, you know, um, now the yogic concept, you know, and this is of course, you know, scriptures, I don't want to, you know, bore you here with quoting and details, but, um, so when, you know, yogis, you know, traditionally, when they did a lot of austerity, you know, renunciation, um, you know, you get a lot of power, and power to your word, you know, so when you say something or want something, you know, this is pretty much going to happen, you know, of birth, you know, it costs you maybe some good karma, you know, some good deeds, you know, but you can make this happen. So this is, you know, many times what happens when like some kind of Anunnaki or other higher being, you know, said, oh my God, this one is, you know, getting too powerful, you know, starting messing around, you know, with my things, they would send, you know, some Apsaras, you know, this most beautiful you know, astral women, you know, you can imagine that we're supposed to be, you know, very seductive dancers, you know, to entice them to sex and lust. You know? And then, of course, you know, lose, you know, these accumulated chi and power, you know, through their releasing their sexual energy, you know. And then, uh, well, some yogis went for it, you know, and spent, a, you know, uh, maybe a week or a month, you know, with without pants on and uh, but then others you know they knew what was going on and it en enraged them so much you know they just burned them you know with their anger you know they would go so angry you know they could burn them you know I mean flames you know? and and of course then all you know their tapasya was burned up you know all their benefits of their you know austerities you know was gone Mm -hmm. So, um, again, you know, you have to be, you know, very careful when you have power to your word. Mm -hmm. And, well, you know, also another thing, of course, with your voice is, you know, it definitely represents, you know, your emotional states. You know? And to make this here very clear, you know, if you have a, you know, peepsy peepsy voice, you know, that just means, you know, you have a lot of stress. <laughs> in your voice, you know, you're not really yourself, right? And then, you know, you deeper, you know, your voice is, you know, the more relaxed, you know, like uh, Barry White, you know, yes, baby, oh, come on here, yeah. you know, really wide and deep voice, you know, that is a sign of relaxation, you know, and of course, self-confidence, you know, not to be confused, you know, with the fat voice. <laughs> So, you know, and of course, you know, your voice, you know, this emotional state, you know, entrances people, you know, babies and animals, you know, same as body language does. Mm -hmm. And now, um, you know, in those Vedic scriptures, you know, they're because of all this, you know, they say, speak only when the other person is open to listen and to consider what you have 
to say. You know? And if the other person, you know, has the power to change something, you know, about this issue, you know, so basically at the right time, you know, and circumstances, you know, and again, you know, only speak about things, you know, that the person can change, you know, and don't talk about, you know, Japanese trade issues, you know, if you know, he's a farmer, you know, a dirt farmer, you know, in Iowa. You know, um, it's just a disturbance of the ethos. You know? No, <laughs> <A> more. <laughs> you know, your voice can also be used like a weapon. You know, so you know, I did, you know, of course, a Japanese Shotokan you know, karate, and you know, they do this ki, you know, and um, when you, you know, in a proper fight. You know, I mean, we didn't do this in the dojo, you know, this was just too nerve-wracking, you know, or in a kumite, <laughs> you know. Uh, but, you know, when you do your punch and you do this ki, you know, when this comes, you know, unannounced or as a surprise, you know, you shatter the other person's force field, you know, and then you can transfer, you know, dark chi, or anger, you know, uh, or just chi, you know, into the other person's body, you know, solar plexus, you know, or you know, any of the acupressure points, you know, and the chi, you know, does the damage, you know, besides, you know, the uh, kinetic impact. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there are even some guys, you know, and I massaged one, you know, from the army, you know, that store dark chi, you know, in their bones. That's nasty, clammy shit. You know, you don't want to do that. You know, so this they can, you know, release this, you know, as a weapon. <laughs> well, uh, you know, once I had a very, very powerful encounter myself, where I used the power of the word or of sound, you know, as an energy weapon. And so, um, you know, I was living in this rural you know, community, you know, of yogis, and, you know, and, and, and one of those properties, you know, there was a pig farmer, you know, and he hated us, you know, and we didn't like him either, you know, we were vegetarians, you know, and he's like raising pigs, you know, very smart animals, you know, for slaughter. And so he hated us with a passion, and, um, you know, he had two shepherd dogs, and of course they were like ripped, those guys, you know, they got all the meat they wanted, and he, they had already bitten, you know, one of the members of our community. And so I didn't know about this, and, you know, so I worked by them, you know, in shorts, you know, you no knife on me, you know, just happy, you know, doing a mantra in my heart. And I hear a sound behind me, and lo and behold, you know, there were these, you know, two shepherd dogs, you know, they were between 80 and 100 pounds each, you know, I mean, ripped those guys, you know, they were in full run, you know, I mean, full run, as fast as they could, you know, running towards me. And by that time, um, maybe, you know, um, let's say, let's translate, I think in yards still, um, it was probably 10, 15 yards away from me. You know? And I, I realized, you know, I, I mean, I'm toast. I can I'm have a pretty good chance against one of those dogs. You know? I know things. But, you know, two, um, you know, I kind of realized if I survive this, you know, I'm going to be quite toasted. You know? I'm going to be pretty messed up and be in a hospital for a while. You know? And um, so... You know, and, and then immediately I remembered that this one Guru Swami Prabhupada in India would chase away, you know, those pesky monkeys that steal everything, you know, with a sharp hut, you know, hut, you know, like a sound like that, like a key eye, hut, you know, and well, you know, I did a hut there, and by then, I mean, those dogs, they were maybe, you know, four meters means 12, 12 feet away from me. You know? And they did this hut, I mean, with all of my power, it just came over me. And those guys stopped and ran away, you know, with their tails between their legs, just as fast as they could, you know. And they saw these force fields, you know, traveling away from me, you know. It was like a bent 
shield and it was just a shimmering in the air like you have from hot air you know or in the film you know predator you know when he turned his you know invisible camo on you have this disturbance this in the air just like that you know this shield traveled away from me <laughs> Mm -hmm. So imagine, you know, that I focus, you know, this energy you know, into like the heart or the brain, you know, somewhere, you know, at the weak spot. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, sound can be definitely used you know, as, as a weapon, you know, at least to intimidate. Um, so, in, in, in conclusion, you know, I have to say, um, you know, um, that we, you know, um, can abuse our word. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, of course, we have done so also in many other cases. You know, we will go to this you know, in in the guided meditation. Uh, and you know, we, we did it. You know, and our ancestors did it. You know, and of course, we also can get cursed with our ancestors, and so we can intercede on behalf of our ancestors. So that's the good thing here. So you know, a lot of their karma from the misuse of the word. You know, as well as our own personal karma from this in lifetimes, you know, can hold us down, you know, diminishing power of our world. You know? It's like the higher dimensional aspects, you know, of us you know, or our supervisor say, uh uh, no more gun for Bobby. You know, see what he did at the mall, no more gun for him, right? So, um, you know. Um, of course, our way, you know, of doing, you know, clearing this is asking for forgiveness, you know, from those that we, you know, or, you know, our gang, you know, our ancestors, you know, hurt through the misuse of our word you know, in these many lifetimes. You know? We also should be, you know, projecting love, you know, from our heart unto those, you know, that we ask for forgiveness, you know demonstrating, you know, that we learned our lesson you know, of divine love, you know, more or less, you know. Uh, the more love you get, you know, the better this works, you know. So really, you know, be very, very loving. And now, thank you for giving me a thumbs up, you know, and sharing this video, you know, or your experiences with the others. You know, I appreciate this. It helps the course. It's good karma. And if you are new to this channel, you know, make sure you describe and ring the bell, you know, so you can be notified, you know, of any new releases. You know, only 10% of my subscribers, you know, get notified. And, you know, I also do Skype session, personal Skype session or Zoom session, you know, for those that are interested at very reasonable rates. Mm -hmm. And now, I mean, of course, no driving. You know, no, 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 no driving, you know, so you're going to be spacing out like crazy you know, and just change the channel, do whatever. Now, find a comfortable, quiet space where you will not be disturbed. You can sit or lay down, you know, gently close your eyes and take a deep breath. And as you exhale, let go of any immediate concerns or tension. Breathe in peace and calm. Exhale stress and tension. Allow yourself to be fully present in this moment. And we ask the spirit guides and the angels and archangels of love and light to protect us in this meditation, to make sure that everything that happens in and from this meditation here is going to be for the highest good in divine harmony with the most benevolent of that we're completely safe and that nothing dark or inappropriate can come to us through us or between us in any way. Mm -hmm. Completely safe. Mm -hmm. 
Amen, Amen, Amen. We also ask that the love and light of Source you know, surrounds our different aspects, the different dimensions. Uh -huh, also, our twin flames and parallel timelines. This is super powerful aura of love and light that just repels the you know, the darkness surrounding us or transmutes it mm -hmm, and definitely transmutes the darkness within us with ease you know enabling us to easily trans you know transcend duality amen amen And imagine that you're pulling in the love of Mother Earth with your breath, you know, but through your legs and through your root chakra, you know, into your heart. Deep inhale and smile, and on the exhale, you know, you send your love through your legs into the earth and go back and forth. Deep breathing all the way in all the way out deep breathing mm -hmm. yes you send your love back and forth pull it in and send it back and you ask the spirit guides to clear any resistances you know from trauma spells, curses, dark magic weapons, or vows even, any blocks you know, that are not helping us anymore, you know, that should be removed, even parasitic beings, and cords from ex-lovers that are still stealing our life force, we like to have those all removed now, um, 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 just keep on breathing your love back and forth and you should probably feel like a little energy shift as these pathways are being cleared very good just breathe back and forth the more you breathe the deeper you breathe the more the effect you're gonna get the more strength you're gonna have in your intent and the sweeter your smile you know the more the love also the more strength to your intent higher vibration more intent very good so now as you have been nicely connected to the earth energies we also have to connect to the heavenly energies it means not just up, into, it's into the higher dimensions, you know, it's into the finer aspect of, you know, creation. So to say, the more subtle ones, you know, the realms where radio waves <laughs> and other things are. Mm -hmm. And so this is access to the crown or celestial chakras, which extend up to you know, two meters, six feet above your head. So smile and put your tongue to the palate of your mouth and that way you can run more chi through your brain. And imagine that you start pulling in the love of Milky Way Galaxy, you know, into your whole body, all the way down into the toes and heels, into your fingertips. And on the exhale, you send your love up. Mm -hmm. And you go back and forth again, Tai Chi speed. Mm -hmm. Smile, breathe with the strength so that you can feel the air or hear the air flowing through your nostrils. Back and forth. And we ask the spirit guides and look at my galaxy to also cleanse our celestial chakras, you know, from any parasites, from any dark programs, you know, whether it's alien races, you know, hostile races that are enslaving us doing it, or whether it's from warlocks, witches, and, 
you know, dark magicians, mm-hmm. or just um, parasites, mm-hmm. or trauma, getting your head bashed in, you know, or the dark magic implements, maybe voodoo doll stuff, you know, whatever it is, we like to have this cleared now, as much as possible without a look, having to look at the details. Um, um, um. Okay, and now, um, you know, um, start pulling in the love from the heavens and the earth simultaneously into your heart. Deep inhale, you know, and on the exhale, you just expand it a little bit. You know, if you want, you can send it anywhere in the body where it hurts you or where it doesn't feel so nice. Mm-hmm. But, you know, uh, if you, there's nothing specially bothering you, just keep it around your heart. You know? Just keep pulling it in now. Mm-hmm. Back and forth. You know, establish the rhythm like the waves, you know, lapping at the beach. You know, in and out. Nice, deep, relaxed. Back and forth, you know, at a strength that you can hear the airflow in your nostril. Very important. Good. And now we ask that, you know, the highest divine aspect, you know, that can, you know, interface with us now, you know, descends, you know, into us or before us, you know, whatever is, you know, better for us, you know, some like to feel it inside themselves, some like to see it in front of you, you know, that's just the representation, hmm? oh, please, you know, descend now, amen, and it takes a few seconds, you know, to fully come in, you know, if you um, let it, you know, it will probably adjust your spine a little bit, mm-hmm. you know, so don't fight it. Right, and of course we asked Source and Spirit Guides to make sure, you know, that um, your real high self, you know, aspect of your soul comes in and not some kind of a predator. Um, um, um. Mm-hmm. And now the next step is the yes and no induction. So, you know, uh, the yes mm-hmm, can be communicated to you as an upflow of energy from the heart to the head. It's kind of an up feeling, an up flow. It feels very positive. And, you know, pay attention. You know, and I will need to feel it now. I will project it now. And I'm starting now. Mm-hmm. If you didn't feel this, I'm one more time. And uh, now there's kind of a feeling, you know, of flowing from the heart to the feet. You know, it's kind of like a downer, the energy flowing down, and it would feel like this. And I do it one more time. Now I'm staying neutral and let your high self show you a yes, please do so now. Um. Mm-hmm. Very good. And we asked your high self to show you a clean, strong no. Now, um. And so now we're just going to ask a series of questions and you just get a yes or no 
and so so in that way you get an overview you know what's kind of cooking with you <laughs> what's going on from your past so you know we asked of course now for your own personal you know karma from your this and past lifetimes as well as the karma from your ancestors you know, from this and past lifetimes mm -hmm. and you know and because you know you suffer from both of those you know, in the bible kind of yeah you know you suffer the sins of your fathers well this is ancestors right <laughs> and of course when they used to curse you know, they always curse the descendants also you know part of the old traditions yes we mess you up and your kids, <laughs> so to say. Mm -hmm. So, um, <clears throat> first of all, you know, let's just ask very simply, mm -hmm, are you significantly, you know, affected by the misuse, you know, of the word from yourself and from your ancestors, yes or no? Mm -hmm. so you, you, I definitely got a clear yes for myself. You probably have one too. Mm -hmm. If you don't get one, um, I would say ask again. Mm -hmm. Let's give it another tester here. So, are you seriously negatively infected by the misuse, you know, of the word, you know, in your own incarnations or from your ancestors? Yes or no. So let's just see, you know, what type of misuse, you know, we or our ancestors did, you know, and give an overview. You know, this is not to blame you, it's just take an inventory, you know. I mean, this is past lifetimes and others, you know, and nothing to do really much with your incarnation. You know, you're here cleaning up one <laughs> that cleans and suffers, you know, from the others. You take one for the team, so to say. So, um, you know, um, words can of course hurt people, you know, um, and sometimes, you know, um, we teased our little brother, you know, from the beginning of his life, belittling him, criticizing him, discouraging him, you know, fault finding, attacking and insulting, you know. So, um, is there bad karma, significant bad karma for us regarding this, yes or no? How about slander? Mm -hmm. You know, slander also hurts, you know, character assassination, anything, you know, uh, from Mimi is a slut, you know, to Bobby, there's a tiny, tiny friend, you know, that he shakes hands with every day. Mm -hmm. um, do we have, you know, dark karma, you know, significantly around slander, yes or no? So, you know, um, sometimes we can make huge effects, you know, through the word, you know, through speeches. You know, and so some speeches, you know, went suck. You know, and I'm not saying Louisiana, you know, I mean, you know, had a very negative effect, you know, but we did those speeches, you know, very well meaning, you know. Um, so, um, you know, some of us, you know, preached about peace, you know, and handing over their weapons because, you know, peace was promised to them. And as a result, you know, he and his followers, you know, got betrayed and slaughtered afterwards. You know, the Irish, you know, have some stories about them. And I actually was involved in, you know, find out for yourself what my involvement was in there. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, also, um, yeah, first of all, yeah, do we have, you know, karma around, you know, speeches that went south, but were well intended, yes or no?
then you know in my work i also came across priests you know or prophets you know pretending to be channeling you know but sending you know the armies you know into an ambush you know? uh, yeah it's basically out of self-importance you know they made this up the so-called messages you know and it didn't end well and thousands of people you know got killed mm -hmm. do you have karma like that yes or no and we asked that all those ghosts that are stuck around these issues you know be brought to the now feeling and ascendant temples, you know, from the Arcturians and reunited with lost loved ones and, you know, further processed for the highest good. Amen. Oh, well, let's ask, you know, are you affected, you know, significantly, you know, um, Regarding lies, you know, of so-called everyday life, you know, like deception, you know, around the value of things, you know, like the mileage of a car or the age of a horse, you know, and other important stuff, you know, sometimes, you know, we send people down the wrong path, you know, into their death, you know, um, you know uh, all kinds of, you know, um, abuse and damage from you know, lying, abusing the word. Are you severely affected by this kind of karma? Yes or no? Alright. And of course we also then, you know, these ghosts that got stuck, you know, around these traumas be helped right now. Uh, mm. Now another really heavy abuse, you know, of the word is, uh, you know, paying, you know, false witness in court, you know, or other important cases, you know, many of which, you know, learned to witch burning, you know, and I tell you there is a lot of karma around this, you know, those witches or warlocks, you know, they have a lot of power, you know, especially when they're angry and being tortured. And if you betrayed them and threw them under the bus, you know, just because you were jealous, you know, or wanted their land or house, you know, get a part of their loot, so to say, you know, I mean, they're cursed, you know, you and your descendants, you know, big time. So, first of all, let's ask, you know, um, do we still have a heavy karma, you know, around the issue of false witness, yes or no? In the you know, false witness is the retarded brother of betrayal. Mm -hmm. And let's see, um, do you know we have a lot of you know um, bad karma around the issue of betrayal? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. And I mean, with bad karma, I mean, you know, as a victim, you know, where you got betrayed, you know, or as a victimizer, you know, where you betrayed others, you know, we always here look at both sides of the coin. <laughs> both sides of the coin, you know, if you want to clear and balance duality, you know, you gotta start seeing, you know, both sides of the coin simultaneously. Now, um, is there, a, you know, a curse, you know, or a word as a curse binding you, you know, to a person, you know, in this or other incarnations? Yes or no? And if you got a yes, you know, it will probably happen quite a lot. And let's ask, you know, the most important one in this lifetime that you're bound to is 
who. You know, there's actually different ways, you know, through which you can be bound, you know, through curses. You know, so one curse is like, you know, where I bind Mimi, you know, to myself, you know, forever and ever to be my bitch, you know, to be do my bidding, you know, as maybe sex slaves or maid servant, you know, as the go for or with their wealth, whatever it is. You know, that's one type of binding. Another type of binding, you know, is like, you know, when you um, curse somebody, again, misuse your word, mm -hmm. let's say I curse a woman, you know, to be always heartbroken, you know, maybe because in a past lifetime, you know, I cursed her because uh, she left me or betrayed me or I couldn't get her, you know, and I was just so angry and jealous, you know, that I put this on her. Mm -hmm. No, the bad side is, you know, you will have to incarnate, you know, with this person, you know, and witness the results of your curse. Mm -hmm. So, you know, she's going to become your mommy or your wife, you know, or your daughter. You know, whatever suffering, you know, you have put onto her, you know, that broken heartedness. Well, you're going to suffer from that. You know, she's going to be your broken hearted mommy or wife that cannot give you any love, you know. Um, so that's the problem with cursing. You, know? you always get that type of uh, backlash and you bound to the people that you cannot hate. <laughs> you know, not a good thing. Right? So again, you know, um, are you bound to people, you know, through cursing them? Yes or no? we ask the spirit guides and souls, you know, you start clearing those pretty please, you know, both ways. You no know, curses and cursed. Another big thing, you know, where, you know, the use of earth, you know, went completely sideways this false consent that we create by singing, you know, along with negative lyrics in songs. You know, like, I can't get no satisfaction. Right? Pretty bad. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I'm on the highway to hell. You know, let's cancel that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Or, you know, what's it? Sex and drugs and rock and roll is my only life and goal. You know, that was a funny one. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, um, these are contracts. You can of sign in there, especially when you do it enthusiastically. Mm -hmm. But kind of innocently, of course, it's a trap. Mm -hmm. And um, so, um, you know, um, are you, you know, so pretty strongly suffering from, you know, false consent? Yes or no? Okay, this may take some time, so we ask, of course, spirit guides, you know, to continue to finish in their own time. Mm -hmm. And, of course, you know, first of all, let's find out, um, are you, you know, affected by negative vows you did, you know, where you hurt yourself, yes or no? You know, and for the purpose of brevity, you know, let's just ask, you know, what's the most damaging vow you did? You know, that's still affecting you the most. You know, and others maybe you can, you know, find out on your own time. And you probably have a lot of those. Now, um, you know, some other things where we with our words, you know, um, there was a lot of damage done, is when, you know, we thought, you know, uh, that the things we said were funny, you know, or okay, you know, but did not imagine the effect, you know, it would have on our timelines. Hmm? 
Are you affected by those things? Yes or no? And um, now, um, you know, the, you know, the so-called schizophrenic and schizophrenic, you know, is, you know, well um, defined by hearing voices, you know. So all the psychics, you know, um, are basically schizophrenics by that, you know, and they're of course all illusion, you know, till you hear, you know, uh, voices, you know, that tell you to do suicide, you know, and then it's taken seriously as, you know, not illusion. So, um, of course, you know, anybody, you know, that observes the phenomena, you know, knows, you know, these are actually other beings, you know, that are just you know, obnoxiously, you know, trying to wear those down that, you know, um, have those openings that can hear them or see them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we like to have, you know, these are, you know, voices, words, you know, that are being used against you, you know through those inner voices to make you upset mm -hmm. and um, so um, let's see uh, you know did we you know um, affect you know others you know by intruding into their minds you know to hurt them with our voice with our intent do we have karma around this yes or no And now, you know, the effects, you know, the invasions into our mind, you know, are these the karmic results, you know, of our misconduct in past lifetimes? Yes or no? Okay. Mm -hmm. And well, let's just also ask, you know, if you hear voices in your head, you know, so they have a portal into your brain, so to say, this is due to cannibalism, ritual cannibalism, where your brain was eaten in past lifetimes. Yes or no? Yeah, and please let me know in the comments, you know, if this happened to you in past lifetimes. Mm -hmm. And I'm still researching it. You know, don't have that much empiric evidence, you know, a few people but, you know, haven't, just let me know. Mm -hmm. So, of course, you know, we asked that, you know, um, this damage, you know, these loops, and even this iconic attachment that attach to our gallbladder meridians, mm -hmm, that they please, you know, be removed, you know, and all you know, the brainwashing and emotional baggage, you know, this came from those foreign voices, you know, even the ones that our ancestors, you know, put into the heads of ours and others, you know, that are not aligned, you know, with our, you know, own divine self expression. We like to have all those voices cleared as much as possible right now. Um, um, And um, did we, you know, um, use our voice as a weapon and have you know, did big time karma around this? Yes or no? Did we abuse mantras? Yes or no? Are we having damage from a mispronounced? That can be, you know, go sideways, you know, if you mean one word and say another one, mm -hmm, maybe sounding just about the same, you know, well, this can go sideways. <laughs> yeah. So is that damaged from mispronunciation of mantras? Yes, I know. I 
and I guarantee you, you know that all of you, you know, have trauma around your throat chakra from being shut up, you know? Uh, let's just ask, do you still carry, you know, trauma in your throat chakra where your word, where your self-expression was being shut up? Yes or no? Now we have a whole list of things, you know, through which this can be done. You know, this probably not a complete list. But just see, you know, how it pings with you. You know, the more the upflow is, the more it affects you. Mm -hmm. And let's just get an overview. Mm -hmm. How much through blades, like swords and knives? And how much through nooses, like being hung? And how much from garrots, you know, piano violin, you know, great assassin too? And how much from choking? How much from mantras being hurled at you to shut you up? And how much from curses? And how much from runes? And how much from sigils? No? They're kind of all very close to each other. And how much from locks? How much from rings? How much is your throat blocks from chains around your neck? How about feathers and scratchy stuff in your throat? How much is there blockage or takeover from tattoos? You know, I've seen guys with demon tattoos, you know, tattooed onto their throat. How much from, you know, implants, high-tech implants? And how much from higher astral dimensional dark technology? Now let's go over some of the vows, you know, for silence. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, we were caught seeing forbidden stuff, and then, you know, with the threat of death to ourselves or loved ones, you know, we vowed to be silent about this, you know, and this can, this dark energy can be quite devastating. Mm -hmm. So how about forced vows of silence? Are they still affecting you? And of course, you know, sometimes they wouldn't believe you, <laughs> that you would be quiet. So they just you know, cut off your tongue or pulled out your tongue, you know, or just did it for torture's sake, you know, or again, you know, to prevent us from talking, witnessing. Mm -hmm. You know, people were illiterate. So um, did this happen to you or did you do this to others? Yes or no? Uh -huh. And how about vows of silence, you know, for renunciation, tapasya reasons? Are you still affected negatively by those?
And then, you know, there are also, you know, vows of silence, you know, that may be obsolete nowadays, you know, for trade secrets, you know, like um, how to do ceremonies, you know, or rituals, you know, or um, breathing and visualization techniques for yogis, you know, I mean, I got threatened, you know, under punishment of death, you know, to reveal certain techniques, you know, by an astral yogi. <laughs> So, um, you know, maybe it's kind of similar to the atomic bomb technology, uh, you know, and so I, you know, get my information, you know, that I teach, you know, in different ways nowadays, you know, where I'm not bound to any of those vows. But anyhow, um, you know, we like to be cleared from these, you know, um, vows that are, you know, are limiting, you know, the ascension of humanity, you know, and if those people, you know, have a problem with this, they can take this to the courts of divine justice. Um, um, um. Now, um, you know, we ask, you know, to please, you know, the ascension teams, you know, and um, our own incarnations and that of our ancestors. And everybody that can help out. You know, I call them ascension teams of love and light. And we ask them to please, you know, bring any um, stuck, you know, um, ghost or spirits or discriminates, you know, from us, our incarnations, that of our bloodlines, you know, and ancestors, you know, to the Arturian love, healing, and ascension temples. Mm -hmm. Now, um, 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 you know, there is the gateway, you know, there, the stargate mm -hmm. into higher dimensions. Mm -hmm. Actually, I worked there as a gatekeeper in past incarnations, it seemed. So, um, mm -hmm. I work with those guys a lot, so it works really well. And, you know, once there, um, you know, as a gesture of goodwill, please reunite them there with their lost loved ones that are also still stuck on the astral plane, like lost baby spirits, sweethearts, etc. You know, especially all those that are stuck there due to the abuse, you know, of the world. Mm -hmm. So please, you know, liberate all those discarnates, you know, um, that also, you know, through misdirection get into false light heavens, you know, to the abuse of the word. And then, you know, please show them, you know, the higher as well as the hidden aspects, you know, from the incarnations to enlighten them, you know, what was karma and what was volunteered for to learn a lesson. And then also what was sabotage from the dark side, you know, like vows, spells, curses, you know, all the hidden stuff, show them that. And of course, show them all this, all this all, you know, affects the timelines and then help them with forgiveness. And once they're forgiven, ask for forgiveness, you know, give forgiveness to themselves and others. We ask absolute source to please, 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 you know, make any hidden stuff visible, remove any cloaking spells and technologies, any camouflage, make visible and expose, you know, what is trickery, misdirection, or hidden agenda, you know, or legalese fine prints, you know, and then have all offenders brought to demand justice, you know, that infringed on free will. Um, uh, uh, mm -hmm. And of course, you know, if not mentioned before, we mention it now, please clear any karmic entanglement and bondage, you know, that still binds us, like deals, promises, contract, trauma, mantras, vows, curses, binding, all kinds of love spell technologies, spells, crazy spells, you know, uh, glamorous, candle magic, black magic, 
No, and any forms of bombs, booby traps, glass, hooks, cords, chains, shackles, crown of thorns, crucifixion implants, and everything else that was not mentioned but needs to leave our space at this time. Also, remove any hitchhiking entities that have attached to us. Mm -hmm. Amen, amen, amen. Once these have left, you know, and our space is clean, you know, then also proportionally return any valuable energies that got stored from us or that were squandered away, you know, due to the abuse of the world. You know, and clear any guilt and trauma around this. Amen. Um, um, and smile mm -hmm, and focus on your breath and on the flow of love. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, as you settle into this calm rhythm of your breath, bring your mind to any instances where your words may have caused harm, intentionally or unintentionally. You know, we asked your high self, you know, to show you the worst you know, from this lifetime now. Amen. And just acknowledge this moment, you know, without judgment, and observe you know, these scenes as an outsider. And now visualize each word of praise that caused harm as a dark cloud being released from your body with any exit, no, or from the body of the one that you hurt. With each breath, let go of the guilt and trauma tied to these words. And with each exhale, Feel the weight lifting off your shoulders. And as you release them, you become lighter and lighter and seem to be expanding more and more. And the more and more you release these stars. You start perceiving this gentle healing light enveloping you, permeating every aspect of your being, soothing and repairing any wounds in your heart and mind caused by these past actions, and you smile, and you breathe deeply, and you feel lighter and lighter as your whole body is filled with more and more love and light. Now in your mind, there's a big gentle smile of the moon to yourself. I forgive myself for the times and confused moments. And of course, for the ancestors too. I release the guilt and trauma associated with these moments. 
I'm learning and growing here every day. And now in your mind, you know, just repeat with me. I'm so sorry. I'm so I'm sorry. I'm so 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 I'm so sorry. 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 Please forgive me. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Please forgive myself. Please forgive I forgive me. myself. Please forgive, forgive myself. Please, please, please. please forgive me. I forgive you. Please forgive me. I forgive you. I forgive myself. I forgive you. I forgive myself. I forgive you. I forgive, I forgive myself. Please forgive me. I forgive myself. I have made those mistakes. I forgive you. I forgive myself. I forgive you. I forgive myself. 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 I forgive you. I forgive myself. I forgive you. I forgive myself. I forgive you. I forgive myself. I forgive myself. I forgive myself. Please forgive myself. Please forgive I forgive you. I forgive myself. Please forgive me. I forgive you. I forgive myself. I forgive myself. Please forgive Ultimately me. on the higher dimensions. Please forgive me. I love you. Please forgive me. I love you. I forgive myself. Ultimately, I love I love you myself. I love you. 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 I thank 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 you. And feel the power of forgiveness washing over you, bringing with it a sense of deep peace and liberation. And smile, 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 so that the love and cleansing can come to you. Now we ask for the presence of expert healing teams that act for the highest good in divine harmony with the most benevolent outcomes to please transmute any physical, astral, emotional, and mental and spiritual trauma to healing energy and upgrade us, you know, to our divine blueprints as much as possible. Um, um, um. Mm -hmm. and just continue to finish, pretty please. And I will count to three, and then you're either going to be snoozing for the rest of the night, you know, in deep, deep sleep, you know, where you recover spiritually. Mm -hmm. And where you be very energized the next morning, you know, or... 
you come back into waking day consciousness and have a very energetic day, you know, being in the flow. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Back in vacant day consciousness, you're fully grounded now. Then, Welcome back, my friends. I hope you had some strong experiences. You feel a lot lighter and better about yourself. Mm -hmm. So, you know, make sure you use your word, you know, strongly and wisely. And if you had a good experience or some far out stuff, you know, please share. You know, I read all the comments and will respond you know, to intelligent questions. You know, please, um, you know, repay my hard work by giving me a thumbs up, you know, and share with other friends that would benefit, you know, from these kind of materials. You know, if you're new to the channel, um, you know, subscribe. And I'm also available for personal sessions on Skype and Zoom. Very reasonable rate for what you're getting. Mm -hmm. you know, I work a lot with mystics and people, you know, waking up. And that's my specialty, you know, showing you, you know, um, how to navigate, you know, these spaces show you the ropes, so to say. You know, what you're seeing here is just a shotgun meditation, you know, um, you know, shooting from the hips, so to say, you know, without taking individual aim and following up leads. You know, but uh, it will um, do a you know, pretty good job for you. So if you respond well, you know, um, um, you know, a personal session will knock your socks off. And so anyhow, um, you cleared uh, most likely a lot of, you know, psychic astral stuff and your physical body will follow suit. So, you know, drink a lot of water in case you get a headache. You know, that means you have to drink more water. Um, again, watch other videos. Um, send me an email if you want to have a session. I love you. Namaste. Namaste.